What's up everybody? So here is an antinatalist YouTuber called Bleak Past who made a video about circumcision and of course this caught my attention. So we will look at his video and see if the claims he makes about this issue uh, are correct or not and we will put him right where he's wrong because I can only uh, I can uh, already spoil spoiler for you that he will claim that female genital mutilation is way 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 worse than male genital mutilation which is of course wrong there is no need to make this arbitrary hierarchy of which is worse because they are both equally bad okay so we just look at his video and debunk it where it needs debunking all right let's do it while we're on the topic of martyring children it's still a thing to cut the genitals of infants This is still a thing we do. Fuck, not we. This is still a thing that humans do. Unfortunately, yes. And his pauses are basically him being rightfully um, shocked at this fact. You know? I'm also very shocked. And each one of us... Uh, expresses this differently but as you can see his video has only 50 views so uh, not many people are interested in in that topic unfortunately and this is why it's still going on because people tolerate it very sad i always say we just because i believe in humanity man but i know damn well this this, this is one of the, like, this is one of the fucking cherries on the shit cake. I can't describe how just the, 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 this, the violent amount of anger I feel every time I hear about female genital mutilation. Well, shouldn't you feel this also about male genital mutilation and uh, intersex uh, genital mutilation and in general genital mutilation? Why make this divide uh, or the special focus on one type of mutilation, right? Again, this um, hierarchy of which is worse is totally unnecessary and it's even bad because it minimizes the harms uh, or it whitewashes the harm of the thing you are excluding right but we'll get to the specific uh, reasons why um, male genital mutilation and female genital mutilations uh, mutilation are both equally bad. I cannot describe, like, it's, it's almost like a, it is really a supernatural level of anger. How fucking horrid. I mean, it's good that we've mostly come to the acceptance that it is a disgusting practice. But why don't we feel the same way about male circumcision? That is a very good question. So, yeah, at least you acknowledge that both is bad. But as we, could, as we will see later, you will basically not 
hold these two evils on an equal level, unfortunately. But we will get uh, later into the video why male circumcision is still going on and why in contrast female circumcision is largely opposed. Meanwhile, male circumcision is widely accepted and tolerated and even normalized. I can say, I can actually answer that myself. Female genital mutilation is degrees of magnitude worse. Wrong. Absolutely wrong. 100% wrong. 1000% um, wrong. What can I say? Again, we will show later the evidence uh, for that. Um, as you can see, I have many tabs open, right? So, um, yeah, this nonsense that female genital mutilation is worse than male genital mutilation, it's, it's actually something that I'm very, very, very tired of hearing. Uh, I'm, I'm actually quite angry about that whenever I hear that. Because, again, it minimizes, it whitewashes the harm of male genital mutilation. Okay? And that's disgusting to me. So there, there is no need to make, to have this hierarchy. You can oppose both. You can actually oppose both equally. You can say both is bad equally. On an equal level you don't have to invent this arbitrary hierarchy which is also devoid of any evidence by the way both is evil both fgm and mgm is evil and if you say one is worse than the other then you are minimizing the the harm or that you're whitewashing the harm of one thing, of these two, okay? Because with male circumcision, they remove the foreskin. But... Yeah, they, they remove the foreskin. Yeah. So what, right? You, you're saying that, like, it's nothing. Right, they they remove the foreskin. You're, like, you're saying this as if it's nothing. The foreskin is extremely sensitive. Extremely sensitive. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. So this is a study um, uh, also by Sorrels at co and colleagues. Fine touch pressure thresholds in the adult penis. It concludes with circumcision ablates the most sensitive parts of the penis. Right? So the internal pre prepuce is the most sensitive region of the uncircumcised penis and more sensitive than the most sensitive region of the circumcised penis. This is what the study concludes. So, to say that uh, it's it's nothing and uh, it's just the foreskin is complete bullshit. Now I can go later into more evidence why the foreskin is actually uh, important, right? But just for starters, it is not just the foreskin and that's it. Right, it's um, a very sensitive human tissue. All right, female circumcision. The, in fact, I'll link a resource below. You can see it for yourself if if you're brave enough. Yeah, I'm brave enough, and it was aside from the NHS. Um, and here are the effects of female genital mutilation. 
um, constant pain, pain and difficulty having sex, repeated infections which can lead to inf infertility, um, bleeding, cysts and abscesses, problems peeing or holding pee and, and so on and so forth, depression, uh, problems during labor and childbirth which can be life-threatening and uh, for, for the mother and baby. Uh, some girls die from blood loss. So yeah, it's, it's awful. No doubt about it. It's horrible. Okay? These symptoms that you can see here with constant pain and bleeding and some girls dying these symptoms are very similar, very similar to those of male circumcision, aka male genital mutilation, aka MGM. So these sim symptoms of FGM are very similar to those of MGM. So why are you basically saying that one is worse than the other if they both have the same symptoms? Or almost the same symptoms. I can summarize it in that there's four different types of female genital mutilation. I'll let you use your own imagination as to what it is they'd be cutting. And yes, it's, it is that. <laughs> but... <sighs> what the fuck? To what end? Can we continue to justify the brutality? From the moment the child is out of the womb, oh, mm, yeah, his foreskin's about eight days old. <sighs> he don't, he won't need that. He, he won't mind. And they do feel pain, by the way. I don't know if I can't remember if they they use anesthe anesthetic on the on the on the baby on the newborn fucking baby when they're cutting. Um, they use anesthetic, uh, 45%, um, of the time. That's the statistic that I heard. All right. There you go. Only 55, uh, 45 of doctors who do circumcisions use any anesthesia at all. So, um, yeah. But even these pain relief measures are not enough, actually. So here's a 2022 study, neonatal infant pain scale in assessing pain and pain relief for newborn male circumcision. And it basically says the results of these trials show that none of the analgesic strategies used obtained the absence of pain. Some differences between circumcision techniques can be noticed, but most assessments exceed the score of three chosen as the clinically significant pain. So as you can see, pain relief anesthesia has basically no effect. The infants still feel horrible pain. Um, so that uh, what you brought up, anesthesia doesn't really matter actually, and it's it's not even widely used anyway. Foreskin off. And like, <sighs> to what end? To you know how how the fuck. Can people bring up the Catholic Church and its child abuse? And in the same breath, they circumcised their kids when they were they were literal infants. Okay, I can probably speak to my experience because... Uh, I, I, I will get later into why, why this is still happening. There are multiple reasons why this is... This is a whole rabbit hole of why male circumcision is going on 
and it's it has like i said multiple reasons uh cultural reasons um also psychological reasons and also economic reasons so yeah we we will get into that uh where i'm from it's generally a pretty big uh uh age milestone uh around the ages of like 12 10 i think 12, 11 12 Though I had mine done when I was 16. I had it done with my younger brothers while he was 12. The operation wasn't even traumatic because they had the anesthetic and they were preventing me from seeing it. It wasn't that that was traumatic to me. It was the fact that grown fucking adults, women and men, sat around me and my younger brother discussing how they wanted to cut off our fucking foreskins to make us into men. Those types of um, excuses, because let's face it, these types of, or it's a initiation ritual into adulthood. Those are excuses. There is... This has nothing to do with becoming an adult. Okay, this is this is such an excuse. Okay. There there is virtually no uh no one who is like maturing for, uh, from this. So this is all about inducing pain. Okay? And we will get into why this is used basically as control over the boys. To make us into men, you had to get somebody to come and cut my fucking foreskin off. Oh, and better yet, They definitely, they quoted Bible verses about <laughs> Old Testament. Old Testament is not all well and good and convenient when they want it to be. Fucking Old Testament. Fuck your Old Testament. Like, this is the modern day version of this, and it's still so abhorrent. Imagine back then, with the fucking filthy ass tools they had, and the lack of knowledge of... of Like, infections and clotting and... I mean, I guess it's passed on this far, so it pretty much must have worked to some degree. <laughs> worked. But well, well, I can show you what was um, one opinion about this at the time. Right? So... This is Maimonides, who uh, wrote in the Guide for the Perplexed. The bodily pain caused to that member is the real purpose of circumcision. None of the activities necessary for the preservation of the individual is harmed thereby, nor is procreation rendered impossible but violent uh, concepts and lusts that goes beyond what is needed are diminished the fact that circumcision weakens the faculty of sexual excitement and sometimes perhaps diminishes the pleasure is indoubtable uh, for If at birth this member has been made to bleed and has had its covering taken away from it, it must indubitably be weakened. The sages, may their memory be blessed, have explicitly stated, it is hard for a woman with whom an uncircumcised man has had sexual intercourse to separate from him. 
in my opinion, this is the strongest of the reasons for circumcision. So as you can see, religious scholar, um, very influential religious figure Maimonides, um, has basically laid out the an ancient roots of why circumcision uh, took place and takes place. It's basically to, yeah, to reduce sexual pleasure and to control the the human male sec sexuality. That is what it's actually about uh, in the grand scheme of things. That's the origin, basically. And we can look at some evidence, for example, uh, the masturbation taboo and the rise of routine male circumcision, a review of the histography. Um, and that says right here, a review of the histo historiography of both the masturbation phobia and the rise of routine circumcision shows that it has been widely accepted since the 1950s that Discouraging masturbation was a major reason why doctors, educationists, and child care experts sought to introduce circumcision of both boys and girls in the later 19th century, a campaign which was successful in the former case, unsuccessful in the latter. So, um, so yeah, it prevailed in the case of circumcision of boys, but... Um, uh, didn't prevail in this uh, circumcision of girls so uh, we can also look at this and this is actually one of the best explanations that I've heard for the origins of um, male genital mutilation by Christopher Wilson and he, sa he theorizes here I suggest that MGM is likely to reduce insemination efficiency reducing a man's capacity for extra pair fertilizations by impairing sperm competition mgm may therefore represent a hard to fake signal of a man's reduced ability to challenge the paternity of older men who are already married so this basically indicates that mate guard mate guarding behavior by older men Basically, tradcons is the reason for implementing circumcision. Basically, they want to control younger men's sexuality because they are afraid of them getting um, sexually with their spouse, right? This is basically the underlying reason for it. It is about tradcons being mentally defective as they are um, having mate guarding obsessions this is what circumcision is actually about all right and again the quote by Maimonides and this evidence from the masturbation taboo and, and by the way I think that phenomena such as nofab are also uh, correlated with with this it's all about uh, mate guarding tradcons in the end who want to sexually police uh, younger men sexuality and control them this is what it's about um, and this article here has a very um, interesting implications for the origin of uh, male genital mutilation, right? So let's hear some of the rest of this video and then we will go more into the articles. It's crazy. I remember a few years back, in some places here, if they don't, if you're an uncircumcised man, People will literally form a mob and force circumcise you.
I couldn't believe my fucking eyes and my ears when I heard that. First of all, how they would, how the fuck would you even find that out? Whether or not I was, unless I'm fucking flailing it in your face. But then, your impulse, and this is why I don't even necessarily focus on, on Islamic extremism as much, because that extremism exists in a lot of places. For a lot of different things. Grown fucking men gather gr gather around to grab another fucking man against his will and force circumcise him force mutilate him and they just left him afterwards and you're like hey you're a man now i guess like what again this is in service of mate guarding behavior by by tradcons, essentially. This is um, this is basically paranoid tradcons who have made guarding obsessions, and housewife uh, housewife fetishes, basically. This is what the psychology behind this is. You don't even give your child a chance before you fucking physically traumatize them and then mentally traumatize them afterwards? Or mentally traumatize them the whole way through? Especially the female FGM? I... My, like, th that is the one thing on this planet that makes my blood absolutely fucking boil. Again, uh, you show that yourself have an anti-male bias if you say especially FGM because, again, both is equally bad. It should both enrage you equally, uh, on an equal level, with an equal magnitude. It shouldn't be one is worse than the other, again. And, and we will also get uh, into also the reasons why FGM takes place. Because there, there are some feminist propagandists who claim that, that patriarchy is uh, responsible for FGM. It's not. And the evidence is very clear on this. Very, very, very clear on this. We will get into that later. Like... Blind, like, oh man, oh man. What the fuck are we, what are we doing this? Why are we doing this to these kids? I have partially explained this already. Um, why this is happening. We will get into more of the reasons later. But, but fin finish, uh, what you have to say, Mr. Bleak Past. Uh, we will see if, the, if you have uh, some more interesting points and then we will wrap up with your video and then actually look at the more educational material that I have open in my tabs. Why are we doing this to people? Even in Western countries, okay, in Western countries, uh, circumcision still happens quite a bit. But again, it depends. I don't even know how. But every time when I talk to my, some of my friends, they literally feel such a betrayal in that they were not consult. They, they, they had, they, I guess maybe luckily or unluckily for them, they had it done when they were infants. Unluckily. There is evidence that infants feel actually more pain than adults and it has very bad implications for early brain development. So very unluckily. I mean, it's both bad whether it's done to an adult or to an infant or to a younger child. Uh, 
it's all bad. Okay, circumcision is all bad at all stages of life. Um, but if it's done to an infant, that is the worst, actually. That is really the worst. No doubts about that, both from an ethical and from a psychological standpoint. And also from a biological standpoint. But they feel such a betrayal. Because it's like, if this was really so fucking important, why would you not ask me? Why would you not ask me and get my feelings about this? Oh, by the way, if you're a fucking natalist listening to this, I'm going to need you to just repeat this very simple sentence after me. Ready? My child is an individual. Could you repeat that for me without your head fucking fizzing and, 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 and fucking exploding? I can't imagine. I can't imagine what goes through the mind of somebody else to be like, yeah, you know, we kind of need to do this because the magic book said so. Or fuck the fucking dead ancestors said so. Again, these traditions don't come out of nowhere, though. Um, they have underlying evolutionary um, and cultural strategies behind them. Again, it's mostly about mate guarding behavior by tradcons. I think that the evidence goes in that direction. Okay. But there is also evidence that mothers have also um, no problem with this done to their boy. So we will also look at that. Like, I guess you could probably get the perspective of women. I, I mean, women tend to say they, they prefer... Uh, uh, what was it? Was it circumcised guy? I don't know. I, I'm not a woman, and I'm I am a straight man. I can assure you. Um, I can't remember which one it was, but I'm pretty sure it was the circumcised. I the evidence on that is kind of mixed, from what I've seen. Um, there are some studies showing that they prefer uncircumcised. Uh, then there are studies that show there are. They prefer circumcised, so it's 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 kind of. I'm I'm not really one hundred percent sure about that one. But I think that women actually don't mind. Both. They they don't have they don't have much problem with circumcision in general, and mothers in general also don't have much problem with that. So, um, le let me show you something. So this is from the U.S. Embassy in Botswana, and it, it says right here, the results of the survey showed that 96% of mothers in Botswana would accept early infant circumcision for their babies. Now, we can say that Many mothers, pro based on that, probably accept that. But maybe this statistic could also be propaganda in order to normalize male circumcision. So who knows? I'm not really 100% sure of that because this um, information on the side has pro-circumcision propaganda. And... The study, uh, uh, or the studies that many people reference when they say that women prefer circumcised uh, men, these studies are also um, full of um, circumcision pro, pro circumcision propaganda. So I'm not really one hundred percent sure on that issue. 
but I, I might uh, do a separate video on that. I don't know. But it doesn't really matter because um, it's bad either way. And I think, as we can see in general, it is legal, unfortunately, in every country, male circumcision, which shows that both men and women roughly equally tolerate it. So, so yeah, this is pretty bad. No, I don't know why. I don't know. You'd have to ask them. Even if that was the case, why? Even in fact, even if that's the case, wouldn't that then create the the demand for circumcisions naturally, somewhat naturally or conventionally from men, without it having to be such a cultural imperative on so many of them? Yeah, but again, that doesn't mean that men should just model themselves after what women want, right? Like, I mean, there are probably some crazy women out there who prefer men with amputees. But that, does that mean we should ampute our our limbs because women find that more attractive or some women find that more attractive just as, as an extreme example here you know what i mean right but this is stupid right so who cares what what these women want who, who cares like In fact, it's such a telling, uh, uh, it's such a telling fact, well, not even a fact, but it's such a telling show of natalists that a child being born gives you the license to brutalize them. And it's funny how arbitrary it is because it's the, it's not even arbitrary. It's, it's, it, it's, it is deliberate because why mutilate the genitals? Why not cut off a fucking pinky or cut off an ear, pluck an eye out? I mean, some places they remove teeth as well, but why not chop two fingers off, you know? Why not chop a few toes off while you're at it? Why is it the most sensitive part of our human bodies, socially and biologically? It is the one of the most, it is the most, outside of our brains, obviously, our genitals are intrinsic to our identity. I know there's a lot of fucking gender ideology bullshit out here right now, and I only say it's bullshit because of how it's 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 commercialized. I might make a video about that. But whether or not your gender fits within a certain uh, convention, you understand that your genitals are intrinsic to you in one way or another. And yet we have so many institutions hell-bent on mutilating every set of prepubescent genitals, every subsequent generation. I'm so disgusted with humanity, man. How there is a sick fucking creator of this universe, and you decided... Okay, um... I think the rest of the video is um, just an anti-natalist rant, so I will not get into that right now because this is not the correct channel uh, for this. This is a man's rights channel. Uh, so, yeah. But yeah, overall, uh, I mean, he's rightfully disgusted at this practice. However, he's basically placing the harm of MGM over the harms of MGM is wrong, very wrong. So let's look into this uh, a little bit. Okay, so I've gone over this. This has the same uh, symptoms as MGM. So here's a study by Hammert and Carmack who did a survey with I think it was over 1000 men and here's what these men reported 
um, as sexual harms from neonatal circumcision. Um, so they reported dry glands require, requiring lubricants. 75% uh, of them reported, reported that. Excess stimulation needed to achieve orgasm. 59% uh, reported that of the over 1,000 men uh, who were surveyed. Uh, erectile dysfunction, 31% reported that. Painful erection slash pain along the shaft skin, 15% reported that. Painful circumcision scar, 8% pr uh, reported that. Penile bleeding along shaft or at scar during sex, 6%. Of the 1,000 men who got circumcised it's, uh, as infants reported that. Or here, insensitive glands, 67% uh, reported that. The late eja uh, ejaculation, 41% reported that. Numbness of circumcision scar, 27% um, reported that. Premature ejaculation, 18% reported that. And hypersensitive circumcision scar, 8% reported that. So there is... Um, yeah, I mean, this is... This is some of the harm reported by over 1,000 men in this study. So you can already see that uh, MGM is just as bad as FGM from this study alone, actually. Now, like I said before with this, uh, even pain relief uh, doesn't help. The infant still feels significant pain. And like I showed with this study, the foreskin is not just uh, some random tissue but actually is very is is the most sensitive part of the penis um then we have another study male circumcision decreases penile sensitivity as measured in a large cohort um this analyzed like uh over like over 1000 men like to large sample size um Exactly, and for the glands penis, circumcised men reported decreased sexual pleasure and lower orgasm intensity. They also stated more effort was required to achieve orgasm and a higher percentage of them experienced unusual sensation, burning, prickling, itching or tingling and numbness of the glands penis. So this is uh, in line with the aforementioned evidence now um what was also on this uh in nhs uh information page here that some girls die from blood loss um, as a result of fgm and this is the same um pattern that we see with F uh, mgm here we have a study lost boys an estimate of U.S. circumcision-related infant deaths. So infants also die uh, uh, because or correlated with the practice of circumcision. So um, the study finds that more than 100 neonatal circumcision-related deaths occur annually in the United States. About 1.3% of male neonatal deaths from all causes. So we can also look at yeah there are also, there's also psychological um, pain uh, and trauma. Some studies link involuntary male circumcision with a range of negative emotions and even post-traumatic stress disorder PTSD. We covered that in multiple videos. Um, it is very clear that when you expose an infant to so much. Uh, 
of course it will have a negative psychological effect. So th th this is so obvious. I, I, I shouldn't even show studies because this is actually common sense, actually, you would think. And again, there is um, recent studies coming out that the risk of circumcision outweighing any evidence, uh, any benefits. So yeah, I also showed this in many videos. Um, this is a also what contributes to um, a sudden infant death syn syndrome. Uh, neonatal circumcision again um, inc increases the risk or like likelihood of sudden infant death syndrome. My research from 2016 suggested that exposure to chronic stress such as that caused by maternal smoking can put a baby at higher risk of cot death and that Early circumcision may also be one of the major risk factors in sudden infant death syndrome or cot deaths in boys. In my latest study, I analyzed the data on sudden infant uh, death syndrome and male, circum uh, male neonatal circumcision across 15 countries where post-mortem examination of infants is mandatory, which included 40 U.S. states. The results show a strong correlation between early circumcision and cot death. So where male neonatal circumcision rates are high, higher rates of cough, cot uh, death occur. So as you can see, a strong correlation. Um, also, um, um, again, wh what he said about like, oh, it's just the foreskin. Uh, here we have evidence that the foreskin actually has immunological functions. Um, basically, uh, for example, lysozyme or lysozyme, which is also found in tears, human milk and other bodily fluids that destroy bacterial cell walls. So this is, uh, the foreskin has these immunological properties that are actually very hygienic so this bullshit that circumcision increases hygiene is complete nonsense actually decreases it because the foreskin actually protects against bacteria um, yeah and, ag and again um, here we have another article showing that showing case studies of um, 19 previously healthy neonates were admitted for acute compl complications after circumcision during 2000 and 2013. Four were admitted for bleeding with hemophilia identified in two cases and uh, Jan Wilbrandt disease in one. Eight boys required emergency surgery, three for severe bleeding. Four boys with amputation of the glands underwent immediate surgical reconstruction. And um, yeah, it also says here deaths attributed to neonatal circumcision are seldom reported and are mostly explained by lack of adherence to medical standards. And this is this is about Western medical standards by the way western okay you can see greater toronto area so canada where circumcision is i think the rate uh, the prevalence rate is i think 30 percent or 20 percent or something like that so yeah this is awful it doesn't matter first world third world same uh misandric practice here another article circumcision psychological damage right so here pain from circumcision and in infancy alters the brain research 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 has demonstrated the hormone cortisol 
which is associated with stress and pain spikes during circumcision. Although some believe that babies won't remember the pain, we now know that the body remembers, as evidenced by studies which demonstrate the Uh, which demonstrate that circumcised infants are more sensitive to pain later in life. Research carried out by uh, carried out using neonatal uh, animals as a proxy to study the effects of, of pain on infants' psychological development have found distinct behavioral patterns ca characterized by increased anxiety altered pain sensitivity, hyperactivity and attention problems. In another similar study, it was found that pain uh, procedures in the neonatal period were associated with site-specific changes in the brain that have found to be associated with mood disorders. Yeah, I mean, again, there is no question about it that this is harmful, okay? Like I said, um, showed this only 45% of doctors who do circumcisions use any anesthesia at all. And it also says here circumcision has an array of risks and side effects, including menetal stenosis, the narrowing of the urethra. Um, yeah, so, and again, I think Maimonides sums up the origins of uh, male circumcision, which is basically sexual control of uh, male human sexuality for mate guarding purposes. Um, yeah, and studies basically echo this. And here we le let's go into um, some of the reasons behind female uh, genital mu uh, mutilation. So this study uh, disagrees with the World Health Organization that female genital modification um, basically constitute evidence uh, or not, not evidence but const uh, are are based on patriarchy in, in like places like Africa and South and Southeast Asia and Middle East. But this evidence uh, or this study here disagrees with that. And we will show some evidence that the study is right to disagree with that. For example, we have here women approve of FGM more than men in Egypt survey reveals 40, uh, uh, 51% of Egyptian women still approve of the procedure. So, so this actually shows you that this narrative that MG, uh, not MGM, FGM is the result of patriarchy is completely bunk uh, wom because women approve of FGM more than men in Egypt for example and we can see here also majority oppose female genital mutilation in countries where practice persists says the UN agency and it says right here quote although female genital mutilation is associated with gender discrimination Our findings show that the majority of boys and men are actually against it, said Francisca Monetti. So, yeah, as you can see, this notion that female circumcision or female genital mutilation is upheld by the patriarchy is some nonsense. Okay, so we basically have that myth out of the way actually with majority of boys and men are opposing female genital mutilation in countries where it takes place and when we look at who carries out these female genital mutilations um, here's a UNICEF report I think from 2005 
uh, saying here, the large majority of girls and women are cut by a traditional practitioner, a category which includes local specialists, cutters or executives, traditional birth attendants and generally older members of the community, usually women. This is true for over 80% of the girls who undergo the practice. In these places where um, female uh, genital mutilation is taking place, we can see that those who actually carry the practice out are usually women. So, yeah. So, as we saw, the majority of women uh, or there, there are more women um, that are for FGM than men and the majority of men in countries where this takes place are against FGM and those who carry out FGM are women so yeah, I, I think we can put to rest this idea that uh, FGM has something to do with patriarchy. That idea is um, debunked uh, completely. And I'm not saying that this antinatalist YouTuber said anything about that, but I just wanted to get this out of the way because there are feminist propagandists who claim that. Now, um, when it comes to male circumcision uh, when someone claims that female circumcision is supposedly worse than male circumcision and makes this hierarchy well we can look at even more damage that male circumcision does like for example brain damage extreme trauma from male circumcision causes damage to areas of brain a team of nurses approached Dr. Paul Tinari, PhD of Kingston General Hospital in Ontario, Canada, to make him aware of something which they had been observing for quite some time. Many of the newborn baby boys circumcised at the hospital were exhibiting excruciating levels of pain so severe the nurses reported that the behavior of these children seemed to be changing in a, tan in a tangible and possibly permanent way. In order to verify these claims, Dr. Tanari su uh, suggested that the brains of circumcised boys be analyzed both before and after the procedure using functional mag mag uh, magnetic resonance imaging and or uh, positron emission tomography scanning to look for changes using one of the nurse's sons as a test subject her, her husband was insisted upon circumcision against her better judgment the team evaluated the boy both before and after circumcision And yeah, here we can see, based on MRA data uh, collected throughout the process, the research team noted significant trauma in conjunction with the foreskin removal process with the most pronounced brain changes occurring in the limbic system, which includes the amygdala and frontal and temporal lobes. So, yeah, and those are like particularly uh, areas in the brain uh, associated with motions, perception and reasoning, according to this article. So, so if, if anyone wants to claim that male circumcision is um, not a great harm compared to female circumcision just show him or show that person this article okay now we can also see many cases where there are even 
botched circumcisions that go horribly wrong, like, um, for example, a guy named um, Johnny Lee Banks, um, 56 year old, and after the procedure, Banks wo awoke, and to his surprise, he was missing his penis. So, yeah, ev even that can happen. No, you, you can you can read this whole article. I, I won't go through all of that, but here are ten cases of hor hor uh, horrifically botched circumcisions. Um, yeah, ma man losing his penis even. Wow, I mean. To say that this is uh, horrendous would be an understatement. Wow. Now here we have a systematic review of complications arising from male circumcision. It says right here the 78 articles were used to compile a list of uh, 47 specific complications arising from male circumcision circumcision surgeries complications from male uh, from neonatal male circumcisions are common and healthcare providers need to be better informed of the potential complications of the surgery so according to this systematic review paper complications from neonatal male circumcisions are common so not rare as many people claim and there are at least 47 specific complications which can arise wow and there are many more actually but yeah this is very strong evidence here um there's more evidence also for psychological problems arising from circumcision like uh, early circumcised men reported lower attachment security and lower emotional stability there's also um, the risk of autism even so here's a national court study in Denmark um, we confirmed our hypothesis that boys who undergo ritual circumcision may run a greater risk of developing ASD so um, which basically means autism spectrum uh, disorder yeah there's also um, post circumcision uh, carcinoma of the penis so here's a little study with 15 patients with post uh, post circumcision uh, squamous cells uh, carcinoma uh, of the penis um, and car carcinoma developed in circumcision scars of the penile shaft and what is carcinoma carcinoma is a cancer so circumcision even runs the risk of um, inducing cancer or having a risk of cancer even in some cases so again I mean the list of potential risks and complications it's just mounting okay so why do we even have this discussion of which is worse uh, female genital mutilation or male genital mutilation there shouldn't be even this discussion because both is equally bad both has a long list of harms that both of these practices uh, um, result in so there's no need to have this unnecessary hierarchy uh, uh, yeah this unnecessary hierarchy to discuss which is worse right mm -hmm. And again, also, f uh, when we discuss many of the reasons I have already discussed, um, 
one of the reasons why male genital mutilation takes place. From what we saw, it has what well, one of the reasons has to do with older men, older dreadcon men trying to basically reduce the competition to their mate guarding. That is basically one of the origin reason origins uh, of male circumcision. But another reason which is more on the economic side is that the cosmetic industry is uh, demanding or has a, has a demand for the cells that are then taken from um, from the foreskins. So it says right here, the use of an infant's foreskin isn't new to the skincare industry. So it has like, uh, human foreskins has sp uh, specific cells that they use for like creams and certain anti-aging uh, cosmetic uh, things. So which promotes skin, uh, uh, skin cell regeneration and, and so on and so forth. So there's also an industry demand behind that. So not just cultural, psychological reasons of, uh, of having, inducing uh, your own trauma onto others, which is a psychological reason behind it, and also not just controlling the sexuality of men, but also this economic reason here. And by the way, uh, I think that um, from what we've seen that uh, with FGM, that women typically carry this out and are more in favor of it than men, which shows me that it is reasonable to hypothesize that this also has something to do with sexual um, competition among women, uh, among females, basically. So it's uh, a similar reason um, uh, for FGM than uh, also with a MGM. So I wouldn't um, say that this has anything to do with patriarchy again so and another point here because at the beginning of the video he basically said it's just the foreskin that they remove right with male circumcision well here is a paper by bollinger and he has pointed out here for example, regarding nerve endings being removed in both practices for female circumcision, the clitoris has the highest uh, concentration of nerve endings in the female body, estimated at about 8,000 sensory nerve endings. The foreskin has as much as 10,000 nerve endings, according to an estimate by New Zealand pathologists scan McGrath. Circumcision regularly removes three-fourths of the penis fine touch nerves. So, yeah, I mean, um, it says also right here, the more nerve endings that are severed, the more pain is perceived. So, so yeah, I mean, uh, as you can see, this, this is not just like the foreskin and it's uh, just a little thing, just a little snip, but this is extremely sen uh, sen uh, sensitive tissue here. So, so to say that uh, FGM is more harmful and more severe than MGM, it's completely wrong. More evidence for that. And here is what I wanted to show you. The 
reasons why we shouldn't um, make this claim that FGM is more harmful than MGM, why we should actually uh, treat these phenomena both equally. Well, let's look at, for example, what Michael Shermer here has to say about these things. He he's basically the perfect example of why we should not do these things. He said here, uh, motivations matter in moral issues. The prime motive for FGM is to control women. MGM, circumcision, has no counterpart to that. Um, so, and he, he also says here, those tweeting back about uh, FGM petition, what about male genital mutilation? Not morally equivalent, one cause at a time. Do your own MGM pet. Uh, petition he means but he's basically calling for the delay in um, dealing with the issue of MGM so you, you can see the harm that it brings to basically only focus on female genital mutilation or have this disproportionate focus on just female men uh, genital mutilation but n not bringing up male genital mutilation, intersex genital mutilation, and any type of genital mutilation other than female genital mutilation, this has the effect of it being downplayed, which is exemplified here by Michael Shermer. And um, yeah, and as we saw from what Maimonides said, for example, and what the studies I've shown said with the masturbation taboo and so on and so forth, MGM also has as one of the prime motives to control men. So what Michael Shermer here claims is complete nonsense. So, yeah. Um, and last but not least, what, what I wanted to show you are circumstances uh, decision related deaths right um, and here's like a site um, called no harm org and sort of attempted to estimate incidence of uh, male circumcision complications um, yeah and based on various sources but now we, we will not get into uh, how they uh, calculated all of this. Um, you can look at this yourself, but I found it quite interesting. Um, so here's like an estimated number of circumcision related deaths based on 1994 world estimate of circumcised males, which was over 600 million. Uh, and it basically said between 1 in uh, 24,000 and 1 in 500,000 children die from medicalized circumcision. Um, so it emphasis, emphasizes here medicalized circumcision because there's also um, un, or not medicalized uh, circumcision. So... Yeah, based on no harms estimates of male genital mutilation, uh, over uh, 35,000 children daily, 13 million children annually, a death rate of 1 in 24,000 translates to 1.5 deaths per day, uh, 540 one children annually, while a death rate of one in 5,000 translates to one death every two weeks, 26 children annually. These rates apply to medicalized circumcision only. Death rate is likely to be significantly higher from non-medicalized circumcision performed at home, en masse, and or under rudimentary slash unsanitary conditions. 
Circumcision of infants and children is unnecessary. Dangerous if done by a phys physician. It is outrageous, outrageously dangerous if done by a non-physician. So, yeah, um, yeah. Basically, uh, you can see that the, the death rate is actually quite high. I mean, when when we look at like one point five deaths per day, or uh, five hundred forty-one children annually. This is, and and those are actually conservative estimates, right? There's a lot of things that are not recorded that are difficult to estimate. So, yeah, I think this all shows you that we can say that the harm of male genital mutilation is on an equal level uh, of or on an equal level of, of harm um, together with FGM right so again this this antinatalist youtuber I mean I don't get why he sometimes emphasizes um, or why he implicitly basically said that FGM is more harmful or more severe I don't know may maybe I misunderstood him a little bit but I think that he thinks that FGM is way worse than MGM and I think that all the evidence that I've shown you um, says that they are both equally bad right and the risks and complications and harms that I've showed are similar to what he has cited with his uh, w with this uh, NHS article that he cited but all these things considered um, we have to ask of course the question why is uh, male circumcision tolerated and even encouraged meanwhile uh, FGM uh, is opposed widely and why why do we see tolerant tolerance for the evil thing uh, of male circumcision uh, and opposition for the evil of female circumcision why, when both should be opposed equally right well the simple reason is that uh, our society cares way more about the harm and suffering of women and girls than about the harm and suffering of men and boys and that is very apparent there is an empathy gap in our society when it comes to uh, uh, when it comes to men and boys so um, yeah I, I have numerous videos on my channel that prove this actually and here's one I can recommend should be watching um, does our society care about the lives of boys and uh, yeah I, I can really recommend you this video because it absolutely proves that our society does not care about the lives of boys and so it is uh, apparent that they also don't care about male genital mutilation um, yeah, and here in this video I show, for example, how uh, uh, people don't care about the lives of a, uh, the life of a boy who is abandoned in a park. This was a social experiment, and um, they tested the reactions of uh, bypassing citizens, and they were also looking at how they would react if a girl or a, if a girl and a cat and a dog were abandoned in a park and they actually uh, totally ignored the boy and they rescued the 
the girl first, and then the dog uh, uh, subject came second, and also the cat. But but no no person stopped for the for the boy. So this shows you that the empathy uh, and care for for even little boys is, is not there in our society. So just in general, people don't give a rat's ass about male issues, male problems. So this is really the fundamental reason why MGM is ignored. And you have all these international organizations like the UN and the World Economic Forum and so on and so forth who rightfully uh, condemn and oppose FGM but then they turn around and promote MGM propaganda and push male circumcision and even recommend it and so on and so forth. So, so yeah, this is basically um, what I wanted to talk about here. I hope this answers the question of why uh, we should be opposing FGM and MGM equally. Okay? Thanks for watching.